When considering a stove, you've got a few options to choose from. You're likely gonna need something a little different when doing a two to three month through hike than you would for a two to three day fast pack. You also want to consider a few other factors like the elevation, temperature, and local regulations. So I thought it would be helpful to run through the options that I've explored in my own search for a stove that I could use for the majority of my adventures. I'll discuss the pros and cons of each, along with some suggested use cases. I'll then show you the complete cooking system that I've landed on and which I'll be using for my upcoming fast packing season. Integrated canister stove systems tend to be the starting point for a lot of campers. And the main benefit of these systems is their high efficiency. The idea is that the stove and pot is integrated into a single closed system. You need to carry a pot anyway, and a fuel canister can usually fit right inside. I bought a Jetboil years ago, which is a super popular choice, before eventually upgrading to the MSR Reactor, which is a little smaller and even more efficient. But it is going to be overkill for most summer adventures. I only use this for winter camping, where I need to melt a lot of snow. In this case, efficiency is the most important thing, and the MSR Reactor seems to be the most efficient stove on the market. But a stove like this is a great starting point for fast packing if you happen to already own one. And if you plan on flying with your stove, a stove like this technically shouldn't be an issue since there's no fuel line, and it's pretty easy to open the valve to demonstrate that there's no fuel left in the system, which you might be required to do. But I have heard firsthand from one person who had their brand new jet boil confiscated by security. So it's ultimately gonna depend on the agent that you end up dealing with. Of course, you can't fly with the pressurized fuel canisters themselves, but these should be fairly easy to find once you arrive at your destination. But I do find that integrated canister stoves make for a larger and somewhat more awkward shape in your pack, even if the total size isn't much more than a non-integrated system. And they are going to be a little heavier than a regular canister stove, which we'll talk about next. Lightweight canister stoves like the MSR Pocket Rocket screw directly onto the same fuel canisters that an integrated canister stove system would use. But the difference here is that they don't have an integrated pot. What you lose in fuel efficiency, you make up for in flexibility, size, and weight. And in my experience, they are much safer and easier to travel with than any other stove. I pair my Pocket Rocket 2 with this lightweight titanium pot from Tokes. This works great for boiling water in order to rehydrate my dehydrated meals and to make coffee, but for heating food directly on the stove, I'd have to use a different pot. And a major limitation with this kind of stove is the surface area it provides, as smaller stoves like this make it difficult to balance a larger pot or pan. The fuel canisters themselves are rated for different temperatures, with some mixes being more efficient for winter use. But a non-integrated stove like this is generally best to use only in warmer months, and it shouldn't really be relied upon for heavy use in the winter for things like melting snow. Even in the summer, you'll need to be especially mindful of wind, given that the flame is completely exposed. Be sure to keep it low to the ground and as sheltered as possible from the wind. You can even make a makeshift windscreen with some tin foil, but this can be dangerous as the fuel canister can overheat. So you need to monitor the temperature of the fuel canister when doing this, even in cold weather. If it's too hot to rest your hands on it, then immediately remove the windscreen. Liquid fuel stoves use a fuel canister connected by a fuel line to a burner. Liquid fuel is typically cheaper than compressed fuel canisters, and it works much better in extremely cold conditions. The burners also tend to be larger and more stable, which can accommodate a bigger pot or pan. But they are more cumbersome and difficult to use than fuel canister stoves, as well as being bigger and heavier. And I'd hesitate to try to fly with one of these. I'd say that liquid fuel stoves are best for when cooking for a large group, for winter use, and when you're less worried about weight or space in your pack, which kind of rules them out as an option for fast packing. Alcohol stoves are super light, cheap, and very reliable, given how simple they are. They come in a few designs, but by definition, these are stoves that use readily available alcohol as their fuel source. And this makes it really easy to find fuel for them during a resupply or when traveling. And you can even make your own stove out of an empty can of cat food or a beer can. In fact, there are entire subreddits dedicated to this. But they can be dangerous if you're camping in really dry environments. I've read about at least one forest fire in Colorado that was thought to have been started by an accident with an alcohol stove. And it's no surprise why they're actually banned in California where forest fires are increasingly becoming a problem. You're also not allowed to use them here in British Columbia during fire bans, which are in place pretty regularly during summer months. And this is because there's no valve to turn them off. They can also be messy and you've got to deal with the unused fuel once you're done. And it needs to be stored carefully. 
You also can't really use them to cook food, only to boil water, since they have a fixed flame. Having said that, I typically only need to boil water anyway for use with dehydrated meals. But they do take longer to come up to temperature and to boil water than a traditional canister stove. And while alcohol stoves are much lighter for shorter trips, the fuel required can actually end up weighing more than fuel canisters for trips over three to five days. So I think they make more sense for really short trips where carrying an entire fuel canister might be overkill. To be honest, I have very little personal experience with these, but it's not something I really plan on messing around with given all of those limitations and risks that I mentioned. Of course, in many areas, these might be perfectly safe and legal to use year round. So if you do wanna learn more about these stoves and to try one for yourself, there's no shortage of information that can be found with a quick search. Solid fuel stoves work much like alcohol stoves, but they burn small cubes of solid fuel. This makes them even lighter since the cubes are lighter and more efficient than liquid, but the fuel can be harder to come by than alcohol and is a little more expensive. And this seems to be the lightest and simplest option available, but you will face the same limitation with solid fuel as you would with alcohol stoves, in that they only work for boiling, they'll be slower than canister stoves, and they won't be allowed during open fire bans. You can also get small wood-burning stoves designed for camping. In fact, some alcohol stoves allow you to burn wood as well. But like with alcohol and solid fuel stoves, these will be prohibited during open fire bans. Dry wood can also be difficult to find, especially in the Rocky Alpine. Not to mention that it violates the principles of leave no trace. And like an alcohol stove, there's no temperature control, so they can take a really long time to boil water. So this is definitely a niche use product and probably not a great option for fast packing. Now it's worth noting here that another option is to simply go stoveless and to rely instead on either just dry food or cold soaking your food. But I personally really like a warm meal in the morning with hot coffee, as well as a warm meal at the end of a long day. A stove also provides a lot more options in the types of meals you can make and can provide an extra element of safety. It's all about using the right stove for the job and there is no one perfect solution. But for lightweight fast packing adventures, my favorite is definitely a lightweight canister stove like the MSR Pocket Rocket. It's small, reliable, simple, and safe to use. I'd been using the original version for a couple of years before recently upgrading to the Pocket Rocket 2, which is a little lighter, more compact, and slightly more efficient. As I mentioned earlier, I pair this with a lightweight pot, which I use to boil water for my dehydrated meals. A small fuel canister is just right for two people for about three days and will fit right inside the pot. I then carry a collapsible cup for coffee and a spork. I'll provide links to all of these items in the description below in case you'd like to check them out for yourself. Let me know in the comments about your experience with any of these stoves. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this.